Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Uh, last thing I made was my steady rest and out of that I had this disc. And even shortly after I'd literally cut this out, I already had another idea for this. And I'm going down the route of a Longworth chuck. Now there's several videos online already of people making Longworth chucks, got all the things that you need to mark out and everything, uh, which is all fair enough, but I want to do something a little bit different. I only have the one chuck, and often or not, I will have something like a segmented ring that I want to put onto a piece. And it is a bit of a nightmare lining it all up at times. Uh, they do go on fairly well, but it would be a lot easier if I could then bring it up via another chuck. Now, as I've only got the one chuck, I know that you can usually mount something like this into a chuck and then the chuck onto the tailstock, which requires some form of adapter. Now, yes, my issue is I don't, don't really want to go off and buy another chuck just for that. So I want to make this so that this will also fit directly onto the tailstock. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to make this exactly the same just about as almost everybody else has done. I've already mounted a faceplate on there. Uh, these are absolutely ideal because they just literally go onto these standard jaws as it is. So I can use it on the lathe like, like most people would use a long worth chuck. So at least that way you can then put your bowl on, finish off the bottom and everything like that. So the way I'm going to mount it to the tail stock is normally people just put a small bolt through there so that it's just in the bottom here. So what I'm going to do with mine is I'm actually going to have a lot longer bolt in there, probably hopefully another 40, 50 mil at least, so that it can go into the Jacobs chuck. And that way it should hold fairly central and work exactly the same way. Now to do that, ideally you do want a face plate where your Jacobs chuck is going to fit into. So where these flat ones are, are absolutely ideal. And I know some people have got face plates which are long things like that and having something like that would therefore cause a lot more issues so the smaller face plate is more ideal now what i've done here the, these are still stuck together with their tape they were slightly too big for me to put on the lathe uh, so once i've got this mounted centrally i just had to use my bench sander just to slowly take probably about a couple of mil off around the edges so i can then put it on the lathe and then throw up the edges uh, Yes, I could have probably put it on to the bandsaw with my circle cutting jig, but the problem is my bandsaw blade broke while I was making this, and I don't have another one yet. Once I've got that on there, I then marked out all my lines. You really do want these lines as accurate as possible, because when you route route all your um, cuts in here, this top board gets flipped over. First of all, got my, effectively, two lines at 90 degrees, and I've got two further lines going across the piece at 45 degrees. I've marked a ring where the size of the face plate is on the other side so that I know how much further I need to come out. I've then just put another ring slightly further out and one towards the edge, which is the maximum where I want to go up to. There's a th another line in here which is halfway between, between those two lines. And as far as I can tell, that is really all you need to do. I know some uh, some of the instructions also say you need another line halfway between these two. But the way you do your routing is, and I've already drilled a hole on here already for where I'm going to base my router. So I will router from literally opposite there and then go around like that. So the idea is the routed line will come from this center ring out to the outer ring, and therefore this middle ring is the arc point. And you just do that for each one as you go around, all eight of them. I was going to do this with the oldie palm router, but once again, I've come across an issue in that the circle cutting jig on here, where I want it to be, you normally put your screw through that hole. That needs to be right on the end here, which means it's at the joint here. And it doesn't matter how you set this up, there is that small blank area of about 10 to 15 mil where you can't do circles. Now I've had to dig out my bigger router, uh, my plunge router, which to be honest might be easier anyway. And it does have a circle cutting jig. Uh, the bars that you normally have on here, you take one of them off, 
place through the router, put this end piece on, and there's your thing there. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go off, drill all the holes where I need this to fit into, because that way I can screw it in place, make sure it's a nice tight fit. So the important thing here is to make sure that I've got these holes drilled as accurately as possible all the way around on the eight pieces. Now I've got to say, using the plunge rotor made this really, really easy work and I've got nice consistent arcs all on this. You probably see to start with, when I did my first one, uh, I had my dust extractor on there, which was the first time I've ever used it. Um, and because this is so dusty, I did want to use it, but I found that I couldn't then get through the full thickness of the material, so I had to take it off. Now all the videos I've watched, when you do these lines, for the circles, you've got your circle here for where the faceplate is, another circle out probably about 10-15mm, your outer circle where you want the maximum, halfway between those two circles is the point of where you pivot on for your arcs. But the, on all the videos I've seen is that there's usually another line between these two circles. Now, I don't actually know what that is actually for, because I've never really seen anybody have any reference to it. The thing that you need to worry about is that when you cut these out, if you go to the point of back here, where you join the circle properly, you can then get your cuts too close to each other, which will therefore weaken the whole thing. But what I did on here was I actually put a mark halfway between each dividing line and that's where I started from. So I've separated these in half, uh, cleaned up all the tape marks off the back, uh, they are fairly clear, nothing sticky on there now. The next thing is that then you would then put these in opposites and then here's what I'm going to be using to keep this together. I will place a washer in there first of all, so that it does slip nicely. But just by putting that in there, there is a little bit of play in there. That might go when I've tightened it up. But I can see on here that my hole is fairly central because when I rotate this around a bit, it's still fairly central throughout. So it's only slightly off. Now for the buttons, I bought these door stoppers off eBay and I bought a pack of 10 of them for £5.49. Now they're made of rubber. Um, I know screw fix do some as well, but I believe they might be nylon, so they're not really going to give and they're going to be a lot harder. So I thought these were the better option. First thing I've done is drill a hole in there six and a half mil and I then will use a five mil bolt with a large washer on to go through there like that and they can then drop on here and then be tightened up from underneath but the other thing I thought of as well is that these are very parallel and there's nothing then for your work to start sliding up so what I've done is I've put this on the lathe just between centers uh, just a dead center at one end and a live center at the other end and I've just used the skew to hopefully you can see that to taper it off so to me that seems a lot better option because if you've got a bowl in there it's going to be less chance of that slipping out
Now I've been off and done eight of these now, which are fairly accurate with each other. So I'm quite pleased with those. Also, I have just put these little 26 mil holes in here with the force a bit. There's four on what will be the top here. And I've also done four on the bottom. And the reason for that is that when this is on the lathe, you're gonna be able to have something to hold onto with finger holes um, on the front and back to twist this. Right, for assembly wise, I will use, at the moment, this is just a what they call a, a roof bolt. Um, I'm not too bothered at the moment this being sunk so it's flat into the top here. Uh, if I have to later on, I will just take out the top here or get some form of a, like a screw head which sinks in. So for this, I will use a large washer on the top there. So that goes through there. A washer on there, so it keeps them apart. That allows it to spin. And then underneath, I'll place another large washer. I will also put in one of these split washers. And the reason for that is what it does, it helps keep the tension on the piece and from any vibration, hopefully also stops the nut from coming on loose, even though I'm going to be using a lock nut on there. So that now spins in there quite freely. And as you can see, I've got a slight bit out there where it's slightly off center, probably less than a millimeter. And for these, Stick the bolt in from the bottom. Do it this way. Have the wing nut on the top. And that should then be a lot easier to do up. And the other thing I'm going to do as well, I'm going to stick in one of those split pins. Wash up. So that's it fully assembled, as you can see on the back there, all the nuts. And if these are loose enough, then this should slide in and out. So using the chuck, even though we've got this long bolt on there, it will just go straight down the center of the chuck. This can then go on. It's now locked in place. As you can see, it's nice and easy using these finger holes to hold the size. So that's now on there. As I said, the difference with this is had I say, for example, got a segmented ring in there, and I wanted to bring that up from the other end.
So had this been a segmented ring, I've now got something that's running fairly central that I could bring up the tailstock and glue onto another piece that's already on the lathe. Now I have actually took the split rings off the top here. Um, what I found was that when you undo the wing nuts, the split rings really do grab hold and even with the wing nuts, it's a lot of work to undo them. So it runs a lot, lot freer without them. Uh, it's just as easy to now to undo as it is to do it up. Uh, the whole thing, as you see, slides nicely. I will say with this though, that because of the play you get in these, when you do put your piece on there and tighten them up, it is, if you need it to run fairly central, it is a little bit of plan about to make sure it runs fully central. But most of the time for people using these sorts of chucks, they're just looking at taking off a mortise off the bottom of a bowl. Um, and even if it's a mil, two mil off center, it doesn't usually cause a problem. And again, with the long bolt running into the tail stock on the Jacobs chuck, works absolutely fine. The only thing I might do in the future is this bolt that I've got in the center here, which is only a six mil bolt. I might upgrade it to an eight or a 10 mil bolt. So it's got that little bit more strength, just so there's not so much flex in it when it's in the Jacobs chuck. So an absolute ideal project to make this after I made this, because these discs are the central discs, which was cut out of this, and therefore I've reused what would effectively be scrap wood. Where I painted this, uh, at the moment, I don't intend to do any painting on this. And the main reason for that is if you do have a bowl on here, uh, you don't really want it going up against some form of paint on the surface. Uh, whether I just give this a coat of wax or something, um, I might do just to help protect it a bit. But I certainly won't be using paint, which could transfer to the top of a bowl or something like that. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next project video.